This is a video about Lewis structures and octet exceptions. Before I start to go over the ones from class, I do want to talk about octet exceptions that have less than eight electrons. And so, for instance, one of the things we said for bonds was that the number of bonds is equal to the number of unpaired electrons. When we draw these Lewis symbols, we spread electrons out. So something like beryllium would have two. Elements like aluminum and boron have three. And so if the number of unpaired electrons dictates the number of bonds that can form, then that's going to affect how many electrons are around these atoms. So boron is definitely an octet exception. Boron is a non-metal or at worst a metalloid and so for a compound like boron trifluoride the Lewis structure is shown to the left but that Lewis structure does not have eight electrons around the central atom. The boron has three, each fluorine has seven, for a total of 24 electrons. Well, there's already 24 electrons shown. So that would be the Lewis structure for boron trifluoride. That is an octet exception. In reality, yes, Boron would like to have an extra electron pair there, and that actually makes this a very reactive molecule. In fact, if that boron trifluoride has something nearby like ammonia, then that ammonia can share its electron pair with the boron to create a bond between the two. What kind of bond would that be called when that electron pair comes completely from one atom? This would be a coordinate covalent bond. It's still covalent and in fact that reaction would release a lot of energy. Aluminum and beryllium can also form covalent bonds with things like chlorine. And so aluminum chloride that we would normally think of as being an ionic compound because it's a metal and a nonmetal actually has some covalent characteristics. And again, just like boron, anything here that has an electron pair can react with that aluminum. And aluminum chloride is actually used in organic chemistry as an acid. Beryllium would also be an octet exception. Now for the ones from class. One of these we've already done. The hypochlorite ion was shown in class on Monday. Considering formal charge, that oxygen has a negative charge, but that's to be expected in this polyatomic ion. In ClO2, chlorine has seven valence electrons. Each oxygen has six. Adding in the one extra for the electron, 
means we've got 20 electrons for this structure. We would start by showing the connections. We would place electrons around the outside of the molecule first. So far there's 16 electrons shown, so we would need to add 4 more to show 20. The problem with this structure as is, is that each oxygen is negative, and this chlorine, which normally has 7 valence electrons, has 2 bonds and 4 lone pairs, so it has a positive formal charge. The negative and the positive don't like it being that close to each other, and so some of those electrons will shift, and the side that shifts again is an example of resonance. where both of those structures are true for the minimum formal charge. What about chlorate? Seven and six times three and one equals 26 electrons. Starting out the same way, That's 24 electrons, so we need two more on the central atom. And again, the problem right now is that each of these oxygens has a negative formal charge. The chlorine now has an even higher formal charge of 2 plus. So two electron pairs need to shift from two different oxygens to form. the stable structures or to minimize the formal charge. Is this chlorine now zero? Seven minus four, sorry, seven minus five minus two, five bonds, one, two, three, four, five, Okay. We can also move those double bonds around, or you can think of it as moving the single bond around. For other resonance structures, for chlorate. So there's three resonance structures here for chlorate. The bond order is 2 plus 1 plus 2, which is 5 over 3 different structures. Or again, 1.66 approximately for the bond order. The bond order in the chlorite was 1.5. The bond order in the hypochlorite was 1. What do you think the bond order will be in perchlorate? Still 7 electrons for the chlorine. 6 times 4 for the oxygen plus 1 for the charge equals 32 electrons. We've got 32 electrons shown. The problem is that right now, each of those oxygens 
has a negative formal charge. What's the formal charge on the chlorine? The formal charge on the chlorine is seven minus four with no lone pairs, so three plus. So three of those oxygens need to transfer or need to share a lone pair to form a double bond. So we end up having four possible Lewis structures. There's one with the single bond on the left. In shorthand, that's how I would draw it. You can move that single bond around to all of the other possible combinations. To see that there are four possible Lewis structures for the per perchlorate ion. Focusing on one of those bonds, what's the average bond order? 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 is 7 over 4 or 1.75. So in looking at all of these, perchlorate has the shortest bonds and the weakest bonds. Chlor per hypochlorite has the longest bonds.